I'd like to call to order the March 28th meeting of the Code Enforcement and Nuisance, Nuisance Board. Um, roll call. Deer. Yes. Deerbone. Yes. Holman. Yes. LaPointe. Yes. Harmon. Yes. All right. Do we have any comments? If not, we will move to approve the minutes from our last meeting uh, with the amended minutes that were sent to us earlier today. Hopefully everyone had a chance to look at that. So moved. Second. Um, Harmon LaPointe. Here. Yes. Dearbone. Yes. Holman. Yes. LaPointe. Yes. Harmon. Yes. All right. Uh, now the staff will stand so we can swear you in. Do you swear to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth, so help you God? All right. We will now hear our first case on the agenda. It's an appeal, case number one, animal, animal protection, case number 2023-0563, citation number 2023-1358.1, location 1101 Nutwood Street, owner Jared Choate and Stephanie Burton, respondent Stephanie Burton, officer Mary Hudson. Is there anyone here representing the Choates or the Burtons? All right. So we can proceed to go on. All right. Stand as written. Since no one is here, we will leave that to stand as it is written. Um, thank you for your, for your work. Um, we have no old business, uh, new business is case number two, code compliance, case number 2023-0237, location 1508 North Sunrise Drive, owner Aislinn Holdings, LLC, Officer Josh Languis. Um, is there anyone here representing this case? This is the action that we're bringing before the board, gotcha. so no one needs to be present. All right, sounds good. This case was the result of a proactive inspection on 124-23. The following violations were observed. Vacant structures and land, inadequate protective treatment, abandoned, duty of maintenance of private property. A notice of violation was sent to the PVA listed property owner with a compliance reinspection date of 126-23. Here in the picture you can see how the back door is um, unsecured. Uh, the side door was only a screen door you can see in this picture as well. Um, this is above the front door where there was some protective treatment needed uh, and again the side door which was uh, unsecured. On the same date code official Heather Lashley contacted the property manager Ron Cummings and informed him the property was vacant and not secured. Ron was given an opportunity to secure the property within 48 hours for the safety of the property, the neighbors, and the public. He was informed the city would issue a citation and have a contractor secure the premises if it remained unsecured after that time frame. On 127-23, the property was reinspected and remained in violation and unsecured to entry and the elements. A repeat offender citation was issued and posted on the property, as well as sent by first class and certified mail to the PVA listed owner and address. The compliance date listed on the citation was 2-6-23. A work order was submitted and a city contractor responded to secure the building. In addition to the original items from the notice of violation, the following violations were added to the citation. Unsecured basement hatchways, vacant building not secured, accumulation of construction, demolition, or landscaping debris, scattered garbage, accumulation of rubbish or garbage, and definition of repeat offender. So here, on the next slide, you can see the rear door is still unsecured. Uh, you can see some construction debris along the base as well as some um, protective treatment issues on the back next to the door. Again, this is the side door of the screen that's unsecured uh, in both of these pictures. Um, on the next slide here, you have another angle of the back door that's unsecured and some of the construction debris. Here's some of the scattered garbage, uh, as well as the accumulated back there in the back. Um, you can also see in the distance there's a tree that's fallen on the property. And then on the right-hand side, you can see some more construction debris around the base of the tree. Uh, and here, is the, uh, here are some pictures after the location was secured. 
So on 2-9-23, the property was reinspected and remained in violation. A second repeat offender citation was issued and posted on the property, as well as sent by first class and certified mail to the PVA listed owner and address. The compliance date listed on the citation was 2-22-23. All violations were included with the exception of vacant building not secured. On, again, you can see here, there's not been much change to the property, if, if any. On 2 23 the property was, re was inspected and remained in violation. The property manager was contacted again, and he stated he was working with the owner to get the house demolished, but they had not come to a decision yet. On 3 8 23 the property was inspected and remained in violation. The property manager was again contacted and stated that they were considering demolishing the property. He stated that they would not make improvements to a building they were going to demolish, but also stated that the decision to demolish had not yet been made. He was asked to speak with, I'm sorry, he was asked to speak with the property owner to determine his intentions with the property and contact code compliance. On 3 13 23, the property was inspected and remained in violation. There was no communication from the property manager or property owner, and no application for a demolition permit was on file. A third repeat offender citation was issued and posted on the property, as well as sent by first class and certified mail to the PVA listed owner and address. The compliance state listed on this citation was 32323. As of this writing, this case has been open for 59 days and the property remains in violation. Here's the third citation. Um, you can see that there was, there have been some more uh, damage, I assume, from the winds. You can also see the accumulated garbage uh, has not been moved, uh, as well as the protective treatment above the door and in the rear. Um, you can see some more uh, construction debris, which used to be kind of like a door that was swinging there on the left-hand side. And here's the last picture of the front of the property. I'll make a motion to authorize the issuance of per day fine and citation in the amount of $100 to run for a period of 60 days or until compliant. A second. <clears throat> Holman. Roll call. Deer. Yes. Dearbone. Yes. Holman. Yes. LaPointe. Yes. Harmon. Yes. All right. Uh, are there any comments or announcements? If not, Mr. Chairman. I will Yes, I, I did have one thing I was uh, going to bring to the attention of the board. Um, a bit of good news from Mr. Cummings that was here uh, at the last hearing. Um, he, uh, we had a property in front of the board at 1207 Fair Street that you had given authorization for us to demolish. Uh, as of today, um, that building is uh, no longer there. Um, it was demolished and is now just down to uh, down to the dirt. So um, they are they are making some progress, and uh, certainly, as with the one that you have just uh, authorized the per day fine, if if they get the demolition permits for those three that are in a series, the other two already have per day fines, the 1500 and 1504. So um, you know, kind of going down the line. So if they move along then we won't issue that citation but just want to bring to your attention that there there is hopefully some good direction <coughs> all right if not I will entertain a motion to adjourn Second. all right dear bone dear here yes dear bone yes Holman yes LaPointe yes Harmon yes 